Genesis 38, we'll, we'll uh, have a few others as well, but Genesis 38 is um, where we're going to be primarily. We'll read the most of the scripture there this morning. And uh, before we go, before we start, I've been telling you guys for a while that I want to do a little bit of, of history and primarily uh, biblical, or excuse me, uh, history here in the United States and a little bit of church history. And we're going to just touch on them for five minutes, basically. I'm just going to do five-minute history lessons. Um, and uh, it'll have to do with church history and American history a little bit, some of the things that we have at, as our heritage. And um, I just want to go over just a few things as far as an introduction this morning. Um, the Bible says in Psalms 33:12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Now, if you know anything about the uh, verse of Scripture we just read, that is all having to do with Israel, but you can spiritually apply it to any nation. Blessed is any nation whose God is the Lord. And if you turn that around, there's an opposite uh, passage of Scripture there in Psalms 917. The Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. And so there is a passage, there's two parallel passages of Scripture, or two contradict, not contradictory, there are two complementary passages of Scripture. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and those that forget God shall be turned into hell. The wicked shall be turned in hell and all the nations that forget God. And uh, whenever you take a look at uh, the way uh, nations handle the Lord, they are always either going up when they ha whenever they handle the Lord correctly, and if they do not honor God, they are going down. There's never an instance in all of history that you can see in anywhere in history where a nation dishonors God and they wind up being a good nation. Now, they may be prosperous for a little while. They may be good as far as economics go. But as far as whether the nation is a good nation to live in, the Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And that is borne out, historically speaking, in every nation that has ever had God as their leader. Whenever a nation honors God, the, the, the uh, culture goes up. It is a good place to be. It is blessed, if you will. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And whenever a nation begins to dishonor God or refuses to honor God, there is never an instance in history that you can ever point to that nation begins to decline into a place that we call hell. <laughs> now, hell can be described as a place of torment, can't it? It can be described as that place uh, that we believe, some of us believe, is in the center of the earth, in the heart of the earth, that is named the bottomless pit, and uh, what the Bible calls Sheol sometimes in the Hebrew. But the Bible talks about here that a nation can be turned into hell, and there's a, a lot of other hints in Scripture that hell can be other things or can be kind of a type of of other things, and I can't very well describe it to you, but I can tell you, I, I can't give you a definition, but I can kind of describe to you what it looks like. Whenever you get a group of people that come along and insist that it is their right to commit homosexuality on a couple of angels in the, in the area of Sodom and Gomorrah, that would be defined as hell. Now, bring it up to 2019. Whenever you get a group of people who march down the street and insist that it is their right to kill babies and that they will revolt if you do not allow them to kill the babies. That would be defined as hell. <laughs> Whenever you get a group of people who consider it that you are a hater if you take a stand against anything having to do with the Scripture, especially when it comes to homosexuality, and they will put you out of business, and they will try to take away your house and make you homeless, and they will put you in jail if they can from what you said... That would be defined as hell. And America has forgotten God. That's where we're on our path to. And we are very rapidly proceeding down a path of hell. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And that's where we're headed to. So whenever you turn around and you look and you listen to something on the radio or you see something on Facebook or Twitter or something posted and you go, how can people do that? And how can that be encouraged? 
never fails whenever I hear on NPR or something like that, I'll listen to the news and something will come across at the very moment. You know, we're going to interview so-and-so who stood up for, you know, uh, abortion rights and things of that nature. It always comes into my mind. you got to be able to kill the babies. you got to be able to kill the babies. Now, even a pig has enough thought process to protect its children. Even a pig. But yet you got a whole group of people in New York who gave a standing ovation to the governor for making infanticide of being able to uh, kill a baby after it is born. Yeah. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Proverbs 14.34 says, The righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And you need to know that 52 of the 55 signers of the Constitution were church-going church members. And they believed God and they worshipped Him in their daily lives. The United States was founded on Christian principles. Today, we have a Supreme Court that tries to interpret the Constitution. But how can lost men interpret the intentions of a bunch of Christian men? How is that even possible? They can't. Those judges are primarily involved in the way, or primarily interested in the way that they can steer the nation rather than what the interpretation of what the Constitution actually was. In the New England Primer, it was used for 150 years in this country, from 1688 to 1838. In the middle of the New England Primer, there was, this was a, a textbook that was adopted by all the colonialists, and then also, after we became a nation, was used in some places all the way up to 1900. They had a verse, phrase, or a phrase, biblical phrase, for each letter of the alphabet. It taught biblical principles. Here they were. A, a wise son maketh a glad father, but foolishness is a, is a foolish, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. B, better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. C, come unto Christ, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. D, do not the abominable thing which I hate, saith the Lord. E, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And it went on and on and on for everyone. And the kids had to memorize their ABCs with those phrases and with those verses of Scripture. We were founded and intended to be a Christian nation, absolutely. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, there were over 6 to 8 million primers sold in the United States before 1830. Your presidents that founded this nation or came up, grew up and went to school with the New England Primer. They had to learn those verses of Scripture. It wasn't the Koran. It wasn't a Hindu text. It was the Bible that our presidents came up on. John Jay, the first Supreme Court Justice of the United States appointed by George Washington, said this, quote, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers, and it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. That's the very first Supreme Court Justice appointed by George Washington. You think the nation was established as a Christian nation? He sure intended it that way and sure thought of it that way. So did George Washington. Many of our young people believe that the suffering and the bad things of our nation are a result of the Christian heritage. And nothing could be further than the truth. America was good 100 years ago. America was a great nation 100, 150 years ago when we espoused, when we espoused the traditions or the uh, principles that, the America, that America was, was born as. Whenever we espouse those principles, America was a great nation. And now, whenever we espouse those principles, America can be a great nation. But the further we get away from those principles, the further we go down this path that we, what the Lord would term, turned into hell. The original intent of our forefathers was that the United States be a Christian nation. And being a Christian nation does not mean we impose our Christian values on someone else. That's not what it means. We'll get into, as time goes by, into the separation of church and state. But it doesn't mean that. Not one person that came over on Ellis Island, not one person that immigrated to the United States, had a question of what religion are you. Not one. What it, means was, what it meant was is that we were supposed to be a Christian nation with Christian principles. I'm not going to go into it this morning, but George Washington's farewell address said this, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. 
In vain, would, in vain would that men claim the tribute of patriotism who should labor to subvert these great pillars of human happiness. What are they? They are religion and morality. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little bit of a history, and you're going to kind of see in history of the United States that there's almost a uh, conspiracy to take away your religious heritage in this country. And you know what? You'd be right there's a conspiracy to take away your religious heritage away from you and away from your children. And the devil has decided to take that history and to throw it away. And so we're going to go into that. We're going to do five-minute history lessons here, uh, just kind of at the beginning of class. And then we will get into the actual lessons.